pride, greed, gluttony, lust, sloth, envy, and of course, the Wrath of Khan. These are the seven deadly sins, a list of seven forbidden acts from Christianity that, if committed, equal a one-way ticket to the bad place. The Museum of Human Misery? Oh, yeah. It's a torture museum. Is there a gift shop? But they're also a widely used trope in fiction. Whether it's the monstrous creatures from Shazam, the seven misguided heroes in the cave, or the inhabitants of Gilligan's Island. Me, but- Don't worry, we'll get to it. The seven deadly sins are a way for some people to contextualize and compartmentalize things considered to be deadly wrong. But are they really so bad? And where do they even come from? Well, the seven deadly sins didn't start out so deadly. You see, around the third and fourth centuries, there was this trend where monks would head out into the desert to practice their faith. One monk by the name of Evagrius Ponticus wrote up a list of eight evil thoughts and deeds he and his fellow monks should try to overcome. They were gluttony, prostitution slash fornication, avarice, acedia, pride, wrath, boasting, and sadness. Well, if sadness was a sin, I think we'd all be screwed. A couple hundred years later, Pope Gregory brought the list to the masses, making a few, <laughs> these are totally forbidden now, changes, and eventually it became the seven deadly sins we know and fear today. These vices became an important part of everyday life and storytelling. Medieval art, morality plays, and classic works like Dante's The Divine Comedy and Marlowe's Tragedy of Dr. Faustus. And centuries later, we're still doing it. I mean, there's an anime literally called The Seven Deadly Sins. So there are a couple ways The Seven Deadly Sins are represented in modern fiction. For example, they can be a plot device, like how the killer in Seven targets people based on what deadly sin they committed. There are seven deadly sins, Captain. Or the actions of the Alliance in Serenity and Firefly. Do you know what your sin is? I'm a fan of all seven. It can even guide an entire series. According to showrunner Ryan Murphy, each season of American Horror Story is centered around one of the nine circles of hell which come from Dante's Divine Comedy and are connected to the Deadly Sins. Just like morality plays from centuries before, some shows and films tend to create caricatures modeled after each of the sins. 1927's Metropolis features cameos from each of the sins, along with the original Bedazzled. I'm the haunted one, the devil. Let me give you my card. In Shazam, they're full-on monsters. But in other cases, the characters represent the sins metaphorically. Like Jim Henson modeled the Skeksis and the Dark Crystal around the sins. You can see those character tropes even more in the prequel show. And then yes, you have freaking Gilligan's Island. Years after the show ended, creator Sherwood Schwartz revealed that each of the seven characters on the island represented a different sin. That's not even getting into all the fan theories about characters and shows using the seven deadly sins. SpongeBob SquarePants, Scar from The Lion King, even Game of Thrones, with some fans believing the houses of Westeros represent the sins. It seems you can't throw a stick without hitting a movie, TV show, or comic book that's at least informed by the idea of the seven deadly sins. Even Batman has faced them. But why do creators continue to use them, even those who don't actually believe they're all that deadly? Well, much like how the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are believed to represent the four humors, the seven deadly sins are clear-cut character tropes, easy to understand and just as easy to apply. And with these, they're not about bravery, selflessness, or other typical hero characteristics. These represent ingrained vices and weaknesses, the things heroes and the audience fear doing or becoming, helping the audience understand or maybe even appreciate the thoughts and deeds that are supposedly forbidden to us. Ponticus, the desert monk, may have seen these vices as something to avoid, but in the world of fiction, they make for a damn good story.